guest today is Gary Rosier, Managing Director and Investment Committee Member at Oak Street Real Estate Capital Management. Founded in 2009, Oak Street is a real estate private equity platform with expertise in net lease real estate investing and also specializing in sale leaseback transactions across multiple asset classes and geographies. Thanks so much for stopping by the studio today, Thanks for having Gary. Me. Uh, great to see you. And Oak Street obviously has a deep experience identifying differentiated uh, income solutions within commercial real estate and uh, looking for some interesting opportunities as well. So I just said a number of kind of you know buzzwords such as triple net lease and sale lease back. So maybe demystify this a little bit for our viewers. What yeah, are those terms? Be happy to. So anytime you hear me say net lease or triple net lease, it just describes the contract right, or the structure of the lease that we will put together with a tenant. And basically what it says is all of the operating expenses are the responsibility of the tenant, not the asset owner. So taxes, maintenance, insurance, capital expenditures, any of those expenses within the asset are the responsibilities of the tenant, not the owner of the asset. So we love that structure because it provides clarity of capital and we get all of those things net of expenses. Right. And of course, that gives you as the owner of the underlying commercial real estate asset, potentially a higher cash flow than it would otherwise. And then the sale leaseback, what is that? Sale leaseback describes how we do it. It's how we source our transactions. In a traditional sale leaseback transaction, a company decides they have a need for capital and they can monetize the real estate they have on the balance sheet. So they will hire a broker yeah. to sell that asset. Buyers will come in and bid on the asset. Highest bidder wins. Not too different than if you were going to sell your house. You'd hire a broker. A bunch of buyers would come in and bid on the asset. We do it a little bit different, but that's your traditional sale leaseback transaction. And so just expand on that a little bit because so as companies, and I understand a lot of them are investment grade companies that may have commercial real estate on their balance sheet, then maybe they want that off their balance sheet. And I'm wondering how conducive is the environment today for getting that CRE asset off the balance sheet, right? Because rates have risen a lot. You know, maybe the expectations for how much real estate is going to return is a little bit lower. So for you as a manager in the space, how much better is the pipeline, the opportunity set for you right now? I mean, it's as wide as it's ever been. And, and and, and the reason for that, I describe the traditional sell leaseback transaction. We do it a little bit different where we're more proactive, meaning we go to companies directly. And our point of view is if you're not in the real estate business, you have an operating business that does something else. We think you have a better use of the capital. We think that capital should go back into your operating business, not servicing real estate. So we can help companies optimize their balance sheet by taking that non-earning asset off of it, putting it into our funds and giving them the cash or the value of that asset. Second part of your question is, why is that exciting now? Well, companies are looking for more alternative ways to access capital today more than ever because the macro environment is driving them to do so. Cap rates are higher, interest rates are higher, harder to issue bonds in the public market. So if you yeah. have a non-earning asset, particularly if you have a low basis in it, it's a good time to monetize it as a capital allocation solution. Right. Good time to monetize it. And speaking of cap rates, you mentioned, I mean, the commercial real estate market is going through adjustment. Uh, cap rates have done one thing for the last feels like 10 years. They've been going down. They're adjusting higher. Uh, you've got market rent growth that has been you know, really high by historical standards, but I assume that's coming down. So, um, you know, your crystal ball view has the reset in commercial real estate prices been complete or how much more might there be to go? I don't mean, I don't think it's fully reset. We saw some reset in the public markets last year not so much in private, but naturally as interest rates are higher and the availability of debt is lower, that is gonna drive cap rates. So like that will naturally happen. I think both of those things still have some room to go. How far, I'm not sure, but I don't think we fully reset. Right. Well, that's a great perspective and sort of, I think, a pragmatic one that we're not quite out of the woods yet. Uh, but. As we look through the opportunity set, right? You know, you're never gonna commit capital all at once. You're gonna look for opportunities as they arise. And I'm curious now, as you look at commercial real estate, whether it's retail, whether it's industrial, whether it's office, there's a lot of dispersion within those different sectors. So what's sort of your outlook for some of those? And maybe give us some examples of what opportunities are you excited about in each of those sectors? Yeah, great. I mean, we, listen, we love industrial. We love essential retail. We will invest in office, but only opportunistically. It's the smallest part of our portfolio. Why we like industrial is because we look for a mission criticality in the asset that we buy. Right. And industrial, be it a distribution center, specialty manufacturing, we're seeing a lot of interest in the semiconductor chip manufacturers as they reshore or onshore, and they're bringing those facilities back to the US. We think the mission criticality in those assets has done nothing but grow. So we like those assets. Same thing in essential retail. What I mean by essential retail is a non-cyclical defensive type industry, grocery stores, pharmacies, discount retailers, we're still spending time in those assets. 
So we like those areas within the market. Again, office, much smaller portion of what we do. If we do it, it's gonna be a highly mission critical asset headquarters, regional headquarters, maybe medical office with a great credit tenant inside it that we bought at great pricing. Otherwise, we're not gonna do it. Again, we're gonna focus on industrial and central retail. Yeah, but maybe to pick up on that a little bit, it seems like everybody's been focused on industrial and everybody's been avoiding office. And kind of from a contrarian investor standpoint, you say, well, has it just been as good as it gets for industrial? And you know, are we being too negative on office? How would you respond to that? I'd say that's probably true on both sides. And again, I've worked for a value investor most of my career, so I'm a natural contrarian. But I still think, again, because the, the mission critical nature of the, these industrial assets, I don't know that that goes away in the short term. I think that there's still some growth there. And Maybe you mentioned the onshoring. We've seen. Onshoring is a big one. And, and again, these are very strong balance sheet businesses. These are investment grade rated companies by and large. And these assets are monstrous. They're brand new, they're cutting edge. And these are billion dollar facilities. And they are coming back home. And there's gonna be a need for capital to help finance those transactions. We think we sit in a, in a very good spot being one of the largest players. So that's actually my favorite, most exciting part of our pipeline are these chip manufacturers and semiconductor makers who are bringing those assets back to the U.S. And you're seeing this right here, right now, happening in real time, this onshoring benefiting. Right, right here, right yeah. now. Um, knocking on wood here, I think you're going to see a few of those transactions in our own portfolios in the coming months. Uh, our pipeline has a number of those in, and we're yeah. really excited about it. Well, it's really interesting to hear because we always hear, you know, as far as investor risks go, well, there's deglobalization and there's going to be two worlds or however many worlds. And the fact that this onshoring actually creates a domestic investment opportunity in real estate, that, that's a really interesting take. So another quick question I have for you, as rates rise, obviously they're negatively impacting potentially the value of real estate. But from your perspective, as you become the owner of uh, some of these properties, Properties, I assume you use debt as part of the financing. How are you managing the costs and putting your market strategist cap on? When do those rates peak? Great question. It's the one area of our portfolio that worries me the most is, is applying debt. Uh, capital markets are volatile. Uh, we don't control it. Uh, and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. That being said, we look at debt today the way we've always looked at it. We want it really simple. Because we're in a triple net lease structure and our income is the same, we want to know exactly what our costs are going to be. So we want to do bank balance sheet non-recourse, flexible debt, fixed, right? We wanna know exactly what our cost is. We work with primarily the larger banks that you know. And again, one of the beauty of our strategy is we actually work with the corporate lending groups, not the commercial real estate lending group, because they're gonna view lending to us based mm -hmm. on our tenants, right? Which our tenants, are investment grade. That's right, our tenants right. are by and large investment grade, multinational, some of the strongest companies that you'll ever work with. My company or my tenants live in your home is what I always say, you know them all. So we're gonna get better rates, more flexible rates than most. But again, they're increasing, right? There's no doubt everybody's cost of capital is going up. One of the unique things about our strategy that gives us a cushion to higher interest rates is that companies need our capital more, which gives us leverage on pricing. So as our cost of capital has gone up, so has our entry cap rate, which gives us a natural cushion to be able to sort of take hmm. some of that storm out of it, take some of that cushion out. Right, so you're underwriting that at a higher cap rate, so you're That's paying right. a lower valuation. That That's gives right. you that cushion. Uh, all right, Garrett, last question. Um, let's face it, cash pays 5%. Uh, and historically, when I look at some of the traditional core real estate assets, the yield on that is maybe four and a half, five percent 5%. So how do you respond to that? How do you compete with 5% cash? How does real estate compete with 5% cash? Why would I still want to invest in real estate? You know, I'll be the first one to say, um, you know, 5%, you know, almost risk-free. That's a pretty good trade, particularly if you're sitting on real estate that has some vintage risk, meaning you bought it lower cap rates for the last several years. It's not a bad trade. Uh, but my argument is always, you can buy a company's real estate, you can buy their equity, you can buy their debt. With the real estate, I still own a hard asset, right, which gives me downside protection. I still have the ability for upside, which sometimes you don't get in fixed income, and I'm taking on the same credit risk. So I still think that my risk reward is better. And by the way, in our strategies, we target seven or 8% yields. So I'm still doing better on the income front. Right, and cash may be 5% today, but it may not be that a year from now or maybe even six months from now. Gary, I think I heard you say, as we walked in here, you are as excited as you've been maybe ever or in a long time about more, the opportunity. More, biggest pipeline, more excited today than we've ever been. Well, that's great to hear. And we're excited to hear that from you. Uh, with that, thank you so much for joining me at thank the you. desk today and sharing your great perspective on the state of commercial real estate. Uh, Gary, we truly appreciate it.